Okay, let me know if you're not able to see my PowerPoint slides. Yeah. So today we're going to look at new chapter. So we also our last chapter. So this week we're going to finish uh, this chapter. So today um, it depends how how you guys are able to absorb. So um, we're going to look at three uh, three things for chapter seven. So first one, we look at uh, equation. Second one, we look at um, uh, finite element formulation for one dimensional problem and two dimensional problems. Uh, for this module, we will not go into three dimensional. We will only look at uh, 1D and 2D. And then um, we will look at uh, how we use what we learn in the equation sector and also the uh, finite element formulation to solve uh, 1D and 2D heat transfer problems. OK, now uh, this chapter, uh, usually you will see a diagram like this. Um, so this one will also be one of the final year, uh, final exam question, All right? So if you see a cube and you see a small Q, capital Q, it means that it fall under this chapter, right? So Q is mean heat transfer, all right? So for this chapter, you need to recall what you learned in your thermodynamics. All right. So um, for this chapter, you will see that um, the heat will transfer from one direction to another direction. All right. So for this example, the diagram that you see on your screen here. So the, the, the heat flow is flowing from the left to right. So you see a small Q sub X in the X direction. And then uh, if the Q come out from another direction, uh, after it travel through a distance of the X, so the sub, the Q sub X plus the X means it come out in another, uh, another surface at another side. Okay, and a few important uh, parameter is that the area of the surface where the Q coming out, small Q coming out, and also the Q coming in. So uh, small Q uh, area and the big Q, big Q is the, 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 the total heat transfer. Only the unit is different, all right? And then we have a insulated boundary. Usually for this chapter, we will have a insulated boundary, normally around the cube, right? Around the cube and only one direction uh, heat transfer. OK, so this is basically about this chapter. Um, I will go very fast on the uh, equation uh, derivation. You can read uh, later on from, from my slides. Yeah, All right. Because uh, the equation, it will take some time to process the, the equation. All right, now the first one, we will look at um, heat, heat transfer through conduction. You know that uh, in thermodynamics, you have uh, a few mechanism of uh, heat transfer. Uh, the first one is conduction. The second one is convection. The third one is radiation. So for this uh, module, we won't look at uh, radiation. We'll look at conduction and convection. These two uh, mechanisms. Okay, the first scenario we look at is without convection is purely conduction. So what are the equation that we look at if you look only look at uh, conduction. OK, now the basic equation we look at uh, heat transfer will be the equation you see on the screen here. So you have uh, two, two components of equation. The one on the left is what coming in equal to what going out. Right. The principle is what is coming in equal to what's going out. So on the left hand side, we write a capital E, we represent the energy in and energy generated inside the system equal to what is going out. So uh, delta capital U, it means that the change of internal energy plus what, how many uh, energy is flowing out. So this is a basic fundamental uh, understanding for this chapter. So if you're able to uh, capture this concept, you're able to do all the question for this chapter, right? So what is coming in equal to what's going out. All right, 
then you expand the equation. So um, there are capital U and small u here. As you can see, there is a note uh, on the screen here. So if you write a uh, small q, qx, it means that it's a heat flux. Heat flux in the unit over kilowatt or watt over meter square. So in this chapter, you will look at uh, watt, uh, W-A-T-T, -T, watt over meter square or watt only. So if you take the small q times the area, you can take out the meter square under here. So you will get uh, watt. So it means that if you the capital Q here is in the unit of watt. Yeah? So just take note on all the unit. So um, uh, just remember what 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 do you see uh, in the screen here, all right? So and then the this diagram. Okay, so for this morning, uh, I introduce you or recall what you learn in thermodynamics. A uh, small Q is a heat flux, where we will mention this word uh, many times for the chapter. Heat flux in the unit of watt over meter square. All right, and is having a direction. Okay, and if you want to find a Q, big Q, it means in the unit of watt. All right, in the unit of watt. Then uh, uh, other things will follow with the uh, equation. Okay, all right. Any question for this uh, first page of today's lecture? Any question? Anything that you're not clear? No, eh? okay, we're going to move forward. Okay. All right, um, the Q here, capital Q is in the unit of what over meter cube. It's, it is the internal heat source, uh, heat generated per unit time, per unit volume, um, and, the ve ve and the value is positive. So uh, in thermodynamics, we are looking at vector also. So if your value of your Q is positive, it means that the heat is generated internal. All right. So uh, you need to understand when you are given a positive value, it means that uh, what, what does it mean, right? So if your capital Q is positive, it means that the heat is generated internal. So if your Q, capital Q, is negative, it means that um, you are having a heat sink where the heat is uh, is being uh, used. Uh, so the heat is uh, moving out from the volume. Okay. So one is uh, positive means internal heat generated. Uh, if you have, if you have a negative means the heat is moving uh, going out outside the volume. Okay. So. Uh, capital Q, watt over meter cube in a volume. Small Q, Qx, it means that is in the watt over meter square. So uh, this is the important unit for this chapter. Small Q is a heat flux. Heat flux is watt over meter square. Capital Q is watt over meter cube is in volume. So don't confuse between the capital Q and the small q. All right. All right. Let me know if you're not able to hear hear me clearly, or you're not able to see the PowerPoint slide. Yeah. All right. Okay. Then after that, um, this is the first uh, equation. Um, second equation. First equation is we introduce you the uh, conservation energy equation, which is the capital E on the left-hand side equal to U plus E out. So this is the first one. Then uh, we expand to a small one. So the next one, we look at the uh, heat conductivity. So later we will use uh, uh, C for conductivity, yeah? the sub uh, in the equation. If you see C means that we look at uh, heat conductivity. The first one, if you want to calculate the heat flux, the heat flux equal to negative k xx, it means in the x direction, x plane, 
uh, dt over dx. T capital T here is temperature. X is the distance traveled by the heat flux. Okay. And KXX is the conductivity, thermal conductivity constant value, usually will be given in the question. So it will be, uh, you want to find the, uh, the heat flux. You take the KXX times the uh, differentiation of your T, of your temperature, right? So you need to recall back, huh? uh, if you are weak in differentiation, you need to go ahead and uh, re revise your skill in uh, uh, differentiation. So if you are given a temperature in an equation, you need to differentiate in uh, differentiate the equation uh, dx, right? All right, so um, these are the other the theory that uh, you you can read from my slides later on. So um, a few new um, equation. This is your QX, uh, capital Q just now, small x, uh, small q, and then uh, introduce you the equation for heat flux, QX. Heat flux equal to negative KXX dt over dx. So this is the equation for this morning. And then this one is the same. So what does it mean if you see a x and then what what is the difference between x plus dx? It means that if you see qx, it means is from the other side, on the left hand side in this example, the heat come in, the heat flux come in from the left hand side. If you see x plus dx, it means it already travel through a certain distance and come out from another uh, another side of the surface. So this equation you see on the screen here, Q sub x plus dx, it means the heat flux over this surface. All right, and uh, you will start seeing all the complex equation where I don't expect you to memorize, but you should know where to find them when you need them, okay? So uh, this one you can read from my, my, my slides here. Okay, so what we are trying to do now is that we try to introduce what is QX, uh, Q, small Q, uh, QX, what is Q sub X plus the X equation, and then what, how to calculate the internal energy, delta U. Delta U equal to specific heat plus mass plus change of temperature, where you get this equation. C is a specific heat, where usually will be given in a question. Rho, you need to refer to a table, depends on the material. A usually will be given the dimension of the subject. Dx is a distance traveled by two location. All right. So dt is the change of temperature between two surfaces. All right, and all this information uh, are on the screen here, so you're able to uh, read it, right? And then the rest, you just do some, um, you will summarize, or you will add all the equation that we introduced just now, and then you solve uh, for this equation on the on the screen here, the second equation, you sub all the equation just now, and then you simplify it, you will get uh, this blue color equation. So this blue color equation, we know it, we, we give you a name, is a one dimensional heat conduction equation. So this is the, uh, the equation for conduction. Okay, yeah. so again, uh, this is the equation for conduction. Later we look at one uh, tutorial question, then you will understand what, how to apply this, uh, all this equation, all right? All right, any questions so far? Any question? Yeah, there, there's a lot of uh, mathematics uh, equation. All right. All right, so if no question, we move forward, yeah? Okay, so we start to uh, derive equation already. 
So just now we introduced you the one dimensional heat conduction equation, which is equal to this one, all right? And then you start to uh, further simplify the equation just now with one statement. What statement it is? So for if you have a steady state uh, scenario, it means the property on the right hand side of the equation will equal to zero. Then you start to rearrange the equation. All right. So at the end, you arrive at one equation, which is um, this one first. So what, what does this uh, QX star mean, right? So if you are seeing um, in the equation, especially for chapter seven, so if you see a small Q sub X and the star, it means that you are having an insulated boundary condition, meaning that uh, the heat not able to transfer out. Usually we will close one surfaces uh, in the question. So you will see Q star in your answer, right? Q X star in, the, in your answer. So um, this is another new thing for this morning. So if you see a QX star, it means that you're having a insulated boundary condition. It means that the heat not able to transfer. Okay, then the rest you can read from the slides here. Okay. Uh, direction of the Q star also important. Q star, if it is positive, it means the heat is flowing into the body. So normally we don't have Q flowing into the body. Normally the Q is flowing out. So you get a negative sign for the Q star. Means the heat flux. Uh, small, small Q, X, it means it's a heat flux. And if you have a heat flux equation with the star above it, it means you are having an insulated boundary condition. It means you close the uh, the, the surfaces with something that not able, not allow heat transfer to happen. All right. Okay. Lots of equation today. So we have clear for one dimensional heat, uh, heat conduction equation. So this is 1D problems. All right. So just to recap, what is, what are the important equation? All right. So important one is you try to understand what is all this notation. What is small Q, what is area, what is the capital Q. All right. And then what is the fundamental conservation energy we're looking at? Energy in plus energy generated plus the internal change of, of your store energy plus the, the energy flowing out. So this is the basic fundamental uh, equation for this chapter. So you, if you understand this one, you're able to do. All right. Then the rest is just uh, uh, expansion of the equation. So the first mathematics uh, notation is a small Q. Small Q in this chapter, it means a uh, heat flux. Heat flux unit is watt over meter square. Capital Q, it means is uh, uh, heat generated in the unit of what over meter cube, it is in the volume. So um, you need to know how to differentiate small Q and capital Q. Both are different. And then um, small Q equal to K dt dx with a negative sign. And the rest is just you derive from the uh, diagram over here. And then uh, delta U equal to C rho A dx times the dt. The, the basic idea is you, you want to find the uh, change of internal energy. Delta U equal to specific heat usually will be given. C times mass times change of temperature. You will get uh, delta U. This one you learn in your thermodynamics. 
and then you get your one dimensional heat conduction equation which is equal to this one all right and then you simplify with the boundary condition you arrive at this one okay you arrive at this one right so important is this one for 1d one dimensional one dimensional heat conduction equation with this one so you can see if you this is the standard format so you can see here you are seeing uh, all the differentiation uh, equation all right we are done for with uh, one dimensional heat conduction without convection then we will continue with the two dimensional two dimensional heat conduction all right now one dimension what does it mean it means the flow the, the q only travel in one direction in this example we look at x direction for one dimensional yeah so if you look at two dimensional it means your heat flux will travel in two direction one in x one in y okay so if you if the question normally section a will ask you to use one dimensional heat conduction equation it means that you only look at one direction x direction and then um, maybe second section or section b you need to use two dimensional heat conduction to find the y direction okay so we are now looking at two dimensional heat conduction without convection so as you as as you can see from the title here two dimensional and you look at the diagram we are having two direction heat uh, heat flux is traveling from two surfaces one in the x direction so from the left to right you see q sub x when you come out you will become q sub x plus dx because it travel through a distance of dx and then another one is the the q the heat flux coming from below to the top of the diagram so the q y because it's kept traveling in y direction and it travel through a distance of dy no longer dx yeah so you travel in y direction it travel through a distance of dy so that's why when you write the heat flux above when it come out from a distance of dy you write y uh, q sub y plus dy so this is how you write your notation okay the first thing you you have to clear uh, the notation first why suddenly this one become y why this one become suddenly become x you have to you have to understand why this one become x plus dx why this one become y plus dy you have to understand yeah okay we continue with the um, equation derivation so this is what the blue color one is what you learned previously in one dimension 1d equation so when you look at two dimensional we, we just copy the concept that what we learned in the previous section it is from one dimension heat conductivity we add the y direction means we change the x to y we change the x to y and uh i think this one is wrong this one is uh should be y yeah so this one also uh type error here okay but the concept is that you just add one more direction in a y direction yeah Okay, another new diagram was added to the uh, screen here. So as you can see, if you cut the cube into half, yeah, if you cut the, the cube into half, so you will see that if you're having an angle at the surface number two, or if you see S sub two, it means surface number two, and there's a uh, axis given so you're having a normal axis with the angle uh, and the y and x axis and you are having a q arrow pointing into the surface so then you derive the equation okay So uh, basically the idea, um, there are lots of equation for, for this chapter. I simplify them, right? If you're interested, you can go ahead and read the textbook, right? So um, 
important is I, uh, in this lecture, I teach you the differences between one dimensional and two dimensional, and then how we, we, we activate the, the equation for, for the solution. Okay, so the next one we going to, we already done with the conduction equation. The next one we cover what is convection. Now convection, we have a few types. Huh? We have a few types. So um, convection is is also a heat transfer, but is taking into the motion uh, of the fluid. So we have a uh, force convection and uh, free convection or natural convection. So if you're using a pump um, or devices to push the flow, then you're having a force convection. And if you're having it uh, naturally, then you, they, you then you're having a free convection, right? So this one you learned in your previous secondary school uh, physics or science, right? So as you can see here on the diagram, the the cube is getting more complex. Just now, in the one dimensional uh, uh, one dimensional conductivity diagram. You only see one direction. So when you study about two dimensional, you are having two direction. Uh, in this one, we only look at okay. In this one, we include okay. For section two, we use the 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 first diagram here. This one for conduction one dimensional, and when we add in the convection, you see what is the differences between the two diagram so you're still having the qx and qx plus dx now when you consider the convection you will add in the q sub h okay you add in the q sub h qx represent conduction q sub h represent convection okay and there are some uh, notation, new notation you see on the screen here, T infinity and H comma T infinity and so on. Yeah. All right. Now just to check your, your understanding. Uh, Lai, this question is for you. So Lai, what, what do you think the Q sub X represent? Is this represent conductivity, uh, conduction, or convection? Conduction. Okay, correct. All right. So good, eh? All right. So for convection, as you can see, all these uh, conversion energy. If we combine the, if we consider the convection, you see that the equation was added a little bit more complex with the QH. QH means that we're having a convection uh, scenario. QH, if you see a QH in the, in or in your answer, it means that you're considering the convection. Or if the question asks you to consider convection, means you are going to use equation that having Q sub H in the in the equation. All right. So again, I don't expect you to memorize uh, all these uh, long equation, but we should know how we apply them. All right. So again, if you're having a convection or you need to consider convection process, find the equation with uh, Q sub H. Really this one. Eh? Then uh, be careful on the P, we are using a capital P here, uh, where the capital P here, it means perimeter. For example, if you're having uh, this cube here, and we're considering this area, so we are calculating the perimeter of this area. It's not a pressure, yeah? All right, so just checking uh, you are there. So if you're having a cube, uh, if you're having a cube. Right, and the uh, heat is traveling on this surface.
I'm going to ask what is the value of P in this uh, in this example, right? So let's say you have a uh, two times three meter, two meter height, three meter width. Okay. <clears throat> All right, Katana, this question is for you. What is the value of P for this scenario? Uh, that's uh, 12. 12? How you get 12? Uh, it's L plus uh, L plus W2. So that's uh, 10. Yeah, answer is yeah. 10. Eh? So you're using 10 for this, this uh, parameter. Yeah, so uh, just take note. Eh? Don't, don't confuse with the pressure because in the in the later on, uh, when you come to SM, uh, your lecturer will try try his best to confuse you with the pressure and all the common uh, parameter. So you just need to be careful when you use uh, this equation. So okay, P here is a parameter, yeah. So just take note on that. Okay. So I did, I did, I did jump all lots of uh, derivation steps. If you follow the textbook, I already cut short and I extract out all the important equation that you'll be use, you'll be using. So if you're considering a convection heat transfer, you have to use this equation. Yeah, Q sub H, it means you're having a convection process equal to H times the change of temperature. H is the constant value for convection. So QH equal to H delta T. All right, T infinity, it means that uh, the temperature in the free flow uh, or in the free stream. So in the question for chapter seven, you will see free stream temperature. All right, so this is also a name, new term maybe for you. Uh, when you see the word free stream float uh, temperature, it means that it also give you a hint that you are you need to use this equation with is a t infinity if you see this word come out in the question free stream fluid temperature it means the temperature of the free stream as you can see here the t infinity means the the the, the stream is flowing so you look at the temperature of the fluid yeah then uh, what what is the t t is the temperature of the solid surface so it means we look at the cube. What is the temperature of this A here? Okay. All right. So you need to be careful. What is the difference between T and T infinity? So one is we focus T is a solid surface. Infinity is a fluid. Normally we will not use the fluid, but um, if you're seeing a free stream fluid temperature, it means that straight away you are having a convection uh, scenario. Okay. So it's quite straightforward. As long as you knew, uh, you know how to look for the keyword uh, for the uh, scenario or for the question. Okay, I think a lot of uh, equations so far. So just to recap, yeah. So what is the? Okay, so just recap, yeah. So the first equation, when you look at one-dimensional conduction, is this equation. Capital E equal to delta U plus E is the first one. The second one, if you look at the conduction, QX, it means the conduction scenario. QX equal to negative K dt dx. This is the second equation. We look at uh, conduction. And then when you look at convection, we did this one. Uh, convection equation QH just now is QX now it's QH equal to H times the T minus T infinity okay then you do all the derivation and then until you reach one of the uh, equation so I just all this you can read from my slides here so Okay, so this is the first, uh, this is the, the blue color one, it means that 
this is the combination between uh, conduction and convection. Okay, you need to identify the correct equation to use. So how do you identify whether you need to use which one and which one? If you're seeing KXX or KXI, if you're seeing KXX in the question, it means that there is having a conduction. If you're having, if you're seeing the H or the T infinity, it means you're having a convection scenario. So this is how you identify the correct uh, equation to use. Yeah? So don't confuse uh, when you should use it. By looking at the equation, you know, right? For example, the one that you see on the screen here, you're having, you're seeing the KXX, you're seeing the H, you're seeing the T infinity. It means that this equation is the combination of conduction and convection. So if you need to consider conduction, convection, you use this one. Okay. Another one is uh, if you look at the screen here, you're having a diagram. So let's say you're having a, a, a cube, but it was uh, insulated in three of its surface and only one open area at the end here. Okay, so we're having a cube or there's a conducting medium. Uh, it's isolated in a three. Uh, three of its surfaces and only one surface is opened up for heat transfer. So there's a special equation for this scenario where it's also very popular when it comes to final exam. So this one is the open, we call it open-ended scenario. So the, the end is open up to for heat transfer and you're seeing the H there. H, it means there's a convection happen and the T is coming up here. So there's equation there. So I'm going to give you the equation. Uh, all right, so be beside that, um, there are a few uh, popular table that you need to refer to. The first one is table 13, that one, dosh one. It gives you all the parameter conversion. So the unit that you check for your answer if you need to check for conductivity, the unit SI is this one. If you need to check your answer for heat flux, is this one. If you need to check your answer for internal heat source Q, your unit is in this one, kilowatt. Uh, normally, you need to, normally the basic one is watt over meter Q. All right. Um, energy kilowatt over uh, H hour and so on, All right? So this is the first table that will help you to score some marks. All right, table 13.1, you need for heat transfer. The second one is the conductivity, uh, thermal conductivity for solid and fluid. So this table, um, you need to put it somewhere. So this one you, is important when you come to your final exam. Um, if the thermal conductivity for solid and fluid is not given, you need to come to this table 13-2 to refer to the value on the right hand side over here that I highlight with my mouse. Okay, so in the question, if you're having, uh, let's say you're having a uh, aluminium at aluminium at zero degree, so the K value you use in your calculation is 202 watt over meter Celsius. Okay. So we need to know where to find all this value. Eh? Normally, uh, normally, if we want to give you some free marks, we won't give you the K value. And in your answer, you write aluminium equal to this one. And you're able to refer to table 13 2, you'll get one mark for this K value. Okay, so make sure you, you copy or you print out this table dash 2 and put it somewhere when it comes to us. Okay. Uh, the next table is 13 3. This one is the convection value. Now, normally, because uh, convection is, is, is very hard to, to quantify, so you only see a range of uh, convection. Normally, the value of convection will be given because uh, it will be inside the, the range is too big for you to estimate. So normally the H will be given. 
which means when it comes to convection, the value will be given. But sometimes the thermal conductivity value, you need to know where to find it. Okay, yeah, so for exam, uh, we are going to use this table, 13 uh, 2, this table, and all this value. And for just to justify, uh, the value from Google will not be useful uh, in exam. Uh. So no, make sure you know table dash two. Uh. Uh, so today your homework, print out this table and put it somewhere. Okay. Okay. I think we have done cover for 1D and 2D uh, convection and conduction theory part. Uh, we go for a short break. Then when we come back, we'll look at uh, final element formulation for 1D and 2D. Okay. Then after that, we look at one tutorial question. Then we call it a day. Okay. Let me stop. Okay.